everybody. Uh, this is the first time we've all done improv together in seven years. Um, but we're excited about it. Thanks so much for coming out. Those of you who may not know where you stumbled into, uh, first of all, you have the skinny improv. Second of all, uh, this guy's been performed together back in uh, from 2004, roughly to 2007. We purchased these sconces together. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we purchased them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, we, uh, it's a lot of fun, and we're excited to be here. Uh, let me introduce everybody. Right here to my left is Joe. Everybody say, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe, what do you do with your life now? We can do this. I'm a computer engineer. <laughs> And uh, excited these guys are back. 
And uh, this is our first time to do improv together in a long time. Um, and uh, we, some of us have forgotten how. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see what else. Uh, we're going to do what's called an Armando. What's going to happen? Ooh. Sounds foreign. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going down a black diamond if you haven't ever seen it. Right. <laughs> this is going to go fun. Uh, this is going to go fun. So anyway, our motto what's going to happen is we're going to get a suggestion from you guys, and one of us will come up and we'll do a, a monologue based on that suggestion. And then what will happen, we'll do three scenes off that monologue, and somebody else will come up to another monologue, three scenes, monologue, three scenes, and that's it. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, till we have a full uh, set of scheduled shows. Uh, tomorrow night at 8, uh, we're taking what we call our current cast in this class, cast, and we're going to do a big show together. So uh, come hang out tomorrow night and watch that. And then um, we'll see what else happens after that. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, may I get it? Uh, we also do clean if you've never been here before. Uh, may I get a suggestion of anything at all, please? Rabbit Wombat. Rabbit Wombat? Thank you, sir. Rabbit Wombat. Rabbit Wombat. Of course you got something. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite a wombat, but I'm pretty sure it was rabbit. Um, happened um, back when I lived in Springfield, as a matter of fact, in, in 2005. Uh, I was living in an apartment with this guy right here named Jeff. Mr. Jeff uh, and if you don't know Jeff, he, he's kind of a trickster. He likes to play some tricks. And things that really well, the, the, the whole thing started with a fire alarm in Jeff's room. Okay? Uh, and the battery had gone extremely low. And, I don't know if the fire alarms still do this, but when they go low, they start to beep. And, and they'll just do this continuous beep that happens. You don't have fire alarms in New York City? Except the highest of somebody to stay in your apartment and look around. Something happens. Okay, so this fire alarm starts going out and it's beeping, it's beeping continuously. Well, we have really high ceilings, and we would stack up chairs to try to get to it. But we couldn't quite get to it, so you're like really like on the tip of your toes and trying to reach the fire alarm. And it wouldn't unscrew, or if it did, like a wire came down. So we got really kind of frightened of this fire alarm. I mean, like, I don't want to be the one who like tries to take it off and it electrocutes me and I fall off like four stack chairs. So we just kept let it keep going. Well, <laughs> this started to get to Jeff, and he started sleeping on the couch in the living room. <laughs> This was over, I think it was in August, or, or, or late July or August, and it was really hot. So he would sleep in the living room with the windows open. And I, for some reason, never shut my door to my bedroom. So I'm waking up one morning, and I have to be <coughs> working at like 10 o'clock, right? And I think it's about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I wake up to this sort of kind of commotion happening above me. And I, I wake up, and all I see is something kind of fluttering around the ceiling. So I instinctively jump up, run out of the room, and shut the door. And I kind of walk out of the living room, I see the windows open. So I'm like, ah, Jeff, you slept the window open. There's a bird in my room. We have, like, you're going to wake up, and the two of us are going to go in there, and we're going to get this bird out. Well. I don't know why we had the idea it was like the great outdoors. We had to go around and take every sort of equipment we had. <laughs> Jeff's wearing a bicycle helmet and an ab, an ab workout. <laughs> no joke. I had like a pair of like, yeah, tennis racket. He's got a tennis racket and like winter gloves. I have a hockey helmet as a visor. I have these hockey gloves and a hockey stick and a hockey pad. And, hung <laughs> and we're ready to go. Ready? We're gonna go in there. So keep preparing. It's like, okay, I'm gonna open the door. As soon as you don't let the bird out, we want to contain it in this room. So we open the door. We kind of rush in, and there's nothing like flying around. Like nothing. And he's looking at me like, um, you know, is this is, is this act, did this actually happen, or you just woke up and you're dreaming? So we're we'll banging my hockey stick, we're we'll banging the track, we're we'll all the place, and we're checking everywhere, nothing, nothing. So we're about ready to give up at, at, at this point, and, and I was like, well, wait, hold on a second. Uh, let me just put my hockey stick in my closet, 
I put it in there and I shake it like this and it's the biggest pack I've ever seen. It drops right to the floor and then directly up at my face. <laughs> this guy screams like a girl, leaves and shuts the door. <laughs> ceilings I've ever seen. I know. That's why I recommended it to you, Dave. I said, you like to drink big, so what uh, have high ceilings? <laughs> it meets all the checklist items I've outlined here, so <laughs> I know. I, I'll <laughs> take it. You will. Wow, Dave, I've never seen you make a decision this quickly. Wow. Normally you him all around for months at a time. Are you, are you doing all right, Dave? Are you, I'm feeling great. I mean, this place has lots of open air. And, yeah. Um, it's an old Earth. cathedral. Oh, a cathedral! <laughs> it's an old cathedral that was made into condos, and now it's being put back into cathedrals. <laughs> 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 I think the nice. zoning regulations figured out, so I had to knock down the condo walls, and now it's back to being a cathedral. It's fantastic. It's like, you know, religious hopes and dreams where I live. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure many people were married here. Yeah, they're, they're still going to be. Yes. <laughs> Are you the pastor? Um, dude, I just poured Dave, myself yes. a bowl of cereal. Oh. My um, name's Alex. Yeah. And this is Francesca. And we like to be married. Hey, I know. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who are you? I'm the witness. <laughs> All right, well, we've got a few things. Mm. <laughs> You guys, go ahead and sign this. It's an agreement. Uh, it's a Missouri law. We uh, like people to sign this to uh, ensure that you are legally bound within the bounds of marriage. So, uh, I have a quill here. Oh. You can just sign this. Alex. And last name. Smith. <laughs> Francesca. Hey, you guys, can you send a funeral for later this afternoon? <laughs> Dan, a spade? Really? Spade. Spade. <laughs> I ran out of money after I bought these new stylish boots, and this is the only thing I can afford. We've got to dig 250 feet of trench. I'm helping. <laughs> you act like I never tried. Okay, I'm up every morning, and I'm at 11 o'clock. Let's cut to the shoe store where he buys the shoes. <laughs> Oh, man, these are the hottest things ever! Yeah! These are the hottest things ever! Yeah! Come back! Come back! <laughs> yeah! Okay, okay listen. It, it takes a the long time. The dude story sounded it. like Flavor Flav, right? <laughs> <laughs> you bought those shoes. It was like a hype man. Uh, this, this is the same way you ended up with that ridiculous basketball jersey. Cut time when he bought the ridiculous basketball jersey. Oh, yeah! This is the best! Yeah! yeah. with a loser brother like you. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. Did you go to the pawn shop again? Yeah, it was in there. It was in the pawn shop. And it was right next to the shoe store. That was right next to the basketball jersey store. And it was, you know, I, I, he was calling at me from the window. But listen, when I took this job, to the you, pawn shop. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Come back. Come back. Listen, when I took this job, you told me that I could wear my own uniform. I didn't say that. When you said you didn't. Okay, I did. I said it. <laughs> he said it. Listen, Danny. And, and you guys, you co own the company, so it's like I don't know who to talk, who to trust. You keep telling me different things. 
That is because we often disagree. Listen, come over here. Can I, can I Danny? Can I today? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> the ditch! How are we going to dig the ditch if we keep letting Danny go buy crap? About the ditch thing, I had kind of an idea. Instead of a ditch, maybe we could build a mountain. Yeah, I like that. <laughs>
So like, yeah, I can do that. So I go back in the room and I found out quickly that you can't put this suit on alone, A, and it's so hot it has a vest that you put ice packets in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that really have on ice, right? So you find out quickly that your, your core temperature is nice and cold and your extremities are on fire. <laughs> and the blood circulation doesn't work out. So my first day uh, in the polar bear suit, I'm out there and it's very awkward. You get these enormous bare feet and the head you can't see out of. And there's foam falling into your eyes and your claws. You can't, you know, <laughs> pay them pause maybe. So my first um, time out on the, uh, the ice with the, the bear suit, uh, I don't think the kids knew how to handle it, so rather than say, let's skate with the bear on the skates, they said, let's destroy the bear. <laughs> I got, they were all grabbing onto me, so at one point I think I could manage about three kids on me, like skating, and then the fourth, the fourth one brought me down, and uh, one of the kids smacked his lip on the ice, and there's blood everywhere. <laughs> so then I, I, I panic, and I think it's a good idea for me to try to clean the blood off with the, with the bear suit. <laughs> so someone's bringing paper towels out, and I'm like, why do I need paper towels? I got these absorbent paws. <laughs> so I pick out the blood, and there I am in a bear suit, polar bear suit, walking past these children's birthday parties with blood all over. Steve. 
<laughs> Steve? Steve, I must learn everything from you. Yeah. Here's another mighty Viking. All of our smorgon speech. <laughs>
I was like um, wanting a Swiss roll the other day, and um, Helen was like, like Helen was like, no, it don't make me pitch it. It makes me pitch it. It makes me pitch it. You don't look, you don't look pitch it at all. A little bit.
This would be so much better if it was on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Sir, we'll become known around the world as a tourist destination for criminals and... I know, I know, I know. It's, I know that we were going for more of the wholesome family thing, but this, this, this is what we have. Let's roll with this. Like, let's like, roll with this. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. It's like burning Cut to the criminal's house. <laughs> This one looks pretty, pretty just... unsavory. <laughs> it's really unsavory, I think. And they got good prices on hotel rooms. Not <laughs> <laughs> bad. We're <laughs> <laughs> doing so well, Gregory. I know, I know. I never expected the ring would bring us to a place so prosperous. Well, we made it prosperous. We did make it prosperous. Through our shared vision. Through our shared vision of it. You're my best friend. Thanks, Fernando. <laughs> They'll always say, Fernando and Gregory. Yes, they will. They created Big Morbus. The Morbus capital fighting Gavin Morbus. So there's just one question that we have to answer. What is it, Gregory? How can we take down Branson? We get over here. <laughs> Sherry. 
I'm still Sherry. So I'm still Sherry. I chose to have your birthday in a public park with sidewalks and stuff so I thought I would help out. Your friends will be here soon. Just remember, you're Sherry. Yes, you have a very manly voice. Yes. You look a lot like a catcher's mitt when you're still Sherry. And now your sisters are up at <laughs> Judith? Hello? <laughs> Judith, you're looking better than usual. Well, thank you. I see that you grew up in different parts of England. <laughs> You've got the accent of a cab driver. Cab driver. driver. Yes. <laughs> you're very fine and formal. This is great. You're aristocratic, you might say. Sure. Yeah. Our yeah. family was split up shortly after the war. Well, I heard that most of them died because they couldn't sign off their names correctly in a roll call. Let's <laughs> talk about a roll call. <laughs> All right, so we're... Three! Why are you Uh, anyway guys, thanks for coming out uh, and just watching us.